hey y'all and welcome back to my channel i am tiara pace if you are new here welcome 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 in today's video i'm going to tell you guys exactly how you can go ahead and begin boosting your credit in 2022 i know a lot of people have emailed me about their business credit they have emailed me about their personal credit about fixing their financing and i want you guys to know that you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me if you need to and if you're ready to get started you can also go ahead and sign up below in the description in order for me to help you fix your personal credit in today's video i want you guys to know that once you have fixed your personal credit you can go ahead and begin building business credit and getting business funding now with getting business credit you do not have to have good personal credit in order to get started but when you go to talking about getting business funding for your business getting those business credit cards you will need your personal credit to be good in order for you to get approved now, when it comes to getting your personal credit fixed in the year of 2022, the first thing you need to do is make sure you're paying all of your bills on time. If your payment history is not at 100% right now, that means that you have a lot of late payments that have previously been reported onto your credit reports. And you need to make sure that you're adding installment loans onto your credit reports. Or if you have installment loans on your credit reports already reporting, you want to make sure that you are paying those each month on time. For you guys that don't know, when you have installments, that's going to be your car note, your student loans, your personal loans, your mortgage, all of those are considered installment loans. So if you already have any of those already reporting onto your personal credit reports and your payment history is not at 100%, you wanna make sure that each of those installment accounts that you have, that you're paying each of those on time each month. Now I know things happen and sometimes people get behind. So if you did get behind, just know that they do not report any late payments onto your credit reports until it has been at least 30 days or longer. So if you have an outstanding balance that is due and it is over that 30 day range, it's more than 30 days, you need to make sure that you go ahead and catch up on that account so that it can bring that account into good standing. Once it bring that account into good standing, it will no longer report negative payment history for you so if you continue to let your payment history continue to be in the unpaid stage it will lower your credit reports as long as it's reporting negativity onto your account so you want to make sure if your payment history is not at a hundred percent that you go ahead and get started getting that up to the hundred percent if you're someone who does not have a lot of installments and you do not have late payments on your credit reports this means that you need to begin building your payment history. In order for you to build your payment history, this means that you need to add installments onto your credit reports in order to have that payment history reporting each month. Now, when it comes to building your payment history, as long as you have at least one installment account open, it will give you that history. And each month that you have something reporting from that installment account, it will continue to boost your payment history when it comes to your payment history when you first get started building your credit since you have a new account lenders like to see you have a longer history with other lenders so what this means is they want to see that you have had installment accounts and that you have other things onto your credit reports and that it has been over a term of time so with this, this means that you have something that you have paid on within months, years, and so forth. That's going to play 15% of your credit report. So if you have new credit history right now where you're just starting out, it may still be hard for you to get approved for certain things until your credit files have began getting old age onto your accounts. So with this, this means that you want to get some kind of installment loan that's going to be at least a year or two longer so that you're able to build that payment history as well. Now, for someone who does not have 
credit cards reporting onto your credit reports, you want to make sure that you go ahead and get at least two accounts so that you're able to have that revolving account showing onto your credit reports. When it comes to getting credit cards, you have to have credit utilization showing onto your credit reports in order for your credit reports to be strong. With credit cards, this is considered your revolving credit line. When you have credit cards reporting onto your credit reports, this plays 30% of your credit score. So if you do not have credit cards reporting already, this is the reason why your credit is not in good standing. Until you begin adding credit cards to your credit file, your credit scores would not go up unless you have utilization reporting onto your credit reports. So once you get your credit cards, you want to make sure that you are using those responsibly and that you're keeping your utilization on the 30%. So what this means is if you have a credit card that's like $300, you want to times that by the 30% so that you can know how much you can spend each month on that card. You don't want to max that card out and you don't want to get your utilization up to the 30% but you want to try to keep your utilization around five to ten percent which is a good rule of thumb so that you look responsible once that credit starts reporting onto your credit file now with their credit cards you don't have to use all of your cards each month but you want to use at least one card per month so that you're having activity reporting onto your credit reports. When it comes to having credit cards, you don't wanna have credit limit available to you, but you're not using those credit limits because anytime you have a credit card and you're not using that card, at least making some type of purchase, sometimes the credit card lender will close that account out if the account is not active and when you have that credit limit available to you and you're not using it it's not helping your credit reports at all so the whole purpose of having credit cards is to show that you're responsible on paper because you're keeping your utilization very low within that credit activity now if you're someone who has had collections or any kind of negativity reporting onto your credit reports you have to make sure that you're working to get those collections removed from your credit reports before you begin to apply for things within your business name to get funding and to get those business credit cards so if you have collections that are on your credit reports or any negative items you want to go ahead and get those removed from your credit reports so that it does not hinder your chances of getting business funding or getting business credit cards for your business now when it comes to getting your personal credit fixed for your business side what you have to realize is your personal credit is checked for business purposes to make sure that you have good activity reporting onto your personal credit but when you're getting business funding and you're getting business credit they will not put it onto your personal credit reports instead they will report it onto your business credit files so the way you can build a foundation with doing this is by keeping your personal credit free and clear from any debt any negative items anything that you choose to purchase you want to keep your personal credit free and clear from all debt and the reason you want to do this is because when you begin to build businesses and get business funding and business credit you're able to build multiple businesses and put your debt onto your business credit reports versus your personal credit reports so one of the things that i like about having business credit and getting business funding is once they pull your personal credit and you don't have any debt onto your personal credit now you're able to get approved in your business name for the funding that you need so when it comes to business credit and business funding you can get just about anything in your business name as you can with your personal name but the difference is is not going to hinder you from getting other purchases within the future so once you have business credit and business funding once you begin getting business credit and business funding within one business name you can then start a second company a third company and so forth and continue to do the same process so if you have not already started building your business credit or getting business funding 
you want to first make sure that your personal credit is good and if it's not you want to go ahead and start fixing it now so when the time comes you can get that business funding and business credit and you can begin transferring your debt from your personal credit to your actual business credit files so that's going to bring us to the end of this video again if you guys need assistance with your business credit make sure you go ahead and check out the description below because i will link each of those in the description i hope this video was helpful for you guys and i'll talk to you on the next video